This week on Sportsman TV, the other white meat. Come on, go with us. This is what it looks like whenever a net is going the wrong direction. A whole bunch of nastiness in your net and no fish. So we're definitely going the wrong direction with this one. What I'll do is I'll uh, and we'll I guess turn it around. Yeah, I guess the water must have just been going that direction that hour of that day. So. so the way you have that set up, you're just going to flip the net over and go back the other? Pretty much, pretty yeah. Much. How long do you like for it to set? It depends on the bait. Pogey in the wintertime, it's really not going to draw a catfish any earlier than about a week. So it has to rot. It has to reach a certain state of decomp in order to work. So it depends on if it's r extremely cold, if it's just starting to get into winter, if it's just coming out of winter, it'll be, it'll be a little different. You can actually come back in a week, that net will not have a single catfish. And then you can get here the next day, just you know if you're in the area to look at it and it's loaded up with fish. When the bait gets right. When the bait gets right. But you know, if you think about it, oysters, crabs, shrimp, crawfish, they get all the praise. So today we're hunting the best kept secret. Smell that oil burning? You hear me? <laughs> Generally with hoop nets, almost everyone that does it is gonna look for a bend in the river. The bend of the river is gonna, it's gonna be where the current, you know, is kind of washed out. Maybe it's a little bit deeper. Uh, but also, if you do what everybody else does, you run the risk of running into a lot of everyone else's net, and everyone else are running into your nets. Quite a few wrong species in there. But, uh, and we still have the majority of our bait, but you never how know, about I guess. How them lay in there? Oh, man. <laughs> so let me tell them you. nasty things, we gotta get them out. We gotta get them out of yeah. here. <laughs> Every one of them, if you're caught with any type of game fish, oh, yeah, I know. anything is right. a pretty hefty they, fine. They frown on that. They don't like it. They especially don't like it when you're actually trying to catch them. So we have our granular bait for an immediate effect. And this to have a little more of a lasting bait in our net. I'm gonna go ahead and close that back up. And then we gotta get it stretched a little tighter than this. Um, so if you drop it down, and there's a lot of slack in your net. It's not gonna be stretched out right. It's not gonna be operating right on the bottom. So we don't want that. We gotta get it stretched out good and tight and able to catch us, hopefully, a lot more fish than I had last time. Is there a certain size? Yes, sir. Uh, How long do they have to be? Okay. Channel cats. I see one blue in there. Most yeah. of the rest of them are all channel cats, aren't and they? And it's caught almost all blue cats in this net every time that I've raised it. So that's a little different also. Um, channel cat have to be 11 inches. Blue cat have to be 12. And Opelousa's cat have to be 14 inches. Do you catch many of them? You do in the springtime. Um, I don't catch a lot of them anywhere at any time. Of course, you don't really do. fish for them, either, right? So that's they're more of a live bait right. uh, right. kind of deal. 
they rather eat stuff that's live. The easiest way to catch them is to actually to catch a bunch of them little bitty cats in your net and the Opelousas cat will go in there to eat them. To eat them, right. Yes, sir. Like, does the price of catfish fluctuate? No, not really. In you fact, sell yours in the rough, right? I, I mean, do, yes, yeah. sir. I don't skin fish. I haven't for a number of years. Um, now, if you want to make a little more money, you can. However, I think there's some new laws and regulations that are getting ready to be passed that say that any place that processes catfish in order to sell them, either it has to have some kind of a, an inspector there right. at the time that they're being processed, or maybe more of a more frequent inspection process. Yeah, being cheap. Don't really know as to what that is. So you figure if you run 2,000 pounds a trip, that's that's a pretty good trip. It is. Um, I mean, I know you we, have some that are better, but yeah, we, rather on a minimum, you would like to have 2,000. Yes, I'd like to have that many. Uh, that's enough to handle in the boat at once. It's enough work in one day. It's, uh, you know, if you have to come back the next day or something like that, you can do that. Um, I do run a lot more in this boat than that at times, but uh, you know, it just kind of depends. The most documented weight I've ever had in this boat is 3,996 pounds of fish. Uh, it's getting better. It's getting a little better. Uh, I have to go through them and see and get all of them legal. Uh, but it is getting a little better. We try to run nets that have a minimum of an inch and a quarter square mesh. And whenever you do that, if the bait runs out and there's no more bait in your net, chances are all the little catfish are gonna get out of the webbing. Now I do add a little ring in the back of my net that is a little bit bigger than that inch and a quarter square mesh. I don't know that it, I don't absolutely know that it works. There's not a big amount of uh, slime around the ring where they've like all where gone the out the little ring, out. but um, it looks like it helps. So whenever you do have some little ones, you are allowed X amount of them undersized. However, the buyers really don't like undersized they don't like fish. It. They don't want to get a, like this it. amount from you that's probably a legal fish. Uh, and if it's not, it's close, close enough to where I'm not, I'm not really going to worry about them. But if you spot anything in there that's obvious, you know, like that, I do want to get that's it out of there. There he is. That's one oh. of your fish. How about that? They show up everywhere. You probably heard that Greg Hackney <laughs> was in the boat today. And he was really hoping to get on a hack attack jig or something like that. And he just swam into the net when he was coming to meet you. Is any of this? I mean, does the tide have much, much to do with it? It looks like it does more than what I expected. I was kind of expecting more of the intracoastal to kind of control more of this more area. Of steady flow. That I'm, at, that I'm in right here because, uh, which, you know, the intracoastal only goes one direction. Right. So I would hope. You would have enough flow that. You would hope that you would have it. It just yeah. depends on, I know that whenever the water is lower, It'll go in and out in different ways than whenever it's higher. But I can't, you know, I can't s s stay in an area where I'm not making money for very long. Right. Um, and obviously, you're definitely not making any on this trip. Em empty net is not a good thing at the end of the day. <laughs> empty net is not a good thing, and the empty live well is even yeah. worse, I bet. Huh? A lot of little fish. We're going to. Go ahead and let those out of there. Because um, I don't want them to get caught up and die for no reason. Can't use them. Gotta let them out. The majority of the nets that I brought down here were 30 inch diameter. And that's a pretty common net. Uh, you know, the majority of the nets that you're gonna run across everybody using, that's not doing it for a living. You know, kind of stuff like that. Obviously, whenever you get a net, it's not a, a, a black or green. It's gonna be, it's gonna be white. It's gonna be new, white nylon. Uh, 
and then you have to coat the net and there's a couple different deals that you know you can do with that I'll just leave that right there I try to uh, after I after I get a lug with legal catfish in it of course I don't want to dump a bunch of a mixed catfish and bait and right on stuff the like that in there so we'll we'll drop another one down and uh, all that we basically try to do is get it about right there and then you roll it and uh, you can drop them right in a lug when you have over a lug they're still going to spill out but you can dump them into into numerous ones if you have a little help or you know you know what you're doing it's uh, always good to move the catfish out from under where you're dropping a bait in because uh, you don't want to get that granulated stuff all over your fish any more than you have to. In areas that we catch a lot of undersized cats, I'll usually dump them in the bottom of the boat. And it's, uh, it's a little easier to deal with them in the bottom of the boat. Obviously, you have to get all of that out of there. Uh, but also, if you, you know, if you drop a bunch of a larger cats onto a bunch of these, you're going to injure that. You know, right. a, as you drop it back in the water, it's probably not going to make it. So, and that's not our goal. Our goal is never to hurt anything that we're not, you know, making any money off of, anything like that. That's it. How, how fast do they grow? You know, I wish I knew that, but I don't. Like I just like those, you know, keeper size. Um, like I would old. imagine that catfish is over a year old. Yeah. I would definitely think that. Um, obviously, eel cats or channel cats don't grow to be as large as the blue cat. I look ready, don't I? <laughs> I'm worthless as tits on a boar hog today. I'm just, I feel like I'm just in the way. <laughs> he, just, he just talking and do, he just never misses a lick, tying knots, just, you know, I'm just standing around here with all thumbs. Well, like anything, it's good to watch what's going on before you try to do it. Not that it matters how the knot is done or how the net is emptied as long, you know, none of that really matters. Uh, yeah. I really like to grab the net and it, Start doing a lot of vibrating or uh, <laughs> a lot of water kind of boiling. How about that? It's got an op in it. Yep, got one Opelousas cat in there. How about that? Isn't that something? I wouldn't have thought about the crabs being here right now. Huh? I wouldn't either, but every every week that it warms up, you start to get them in your nets a little bit. So it was a small um, one in that other net, the last one. Yep, and depending on what you're using for bait, you know, you can catch whole bunch of them in these nets. Yeah, I would think, especially a lot, when it warms up. Yeah, a lot of them just kind of happen in there, don't get me wrong, but a lot of them do go in there to eat the bait. That's a Opelousa, flathead catfish. That I, I hate to say it, I, I like them all, but he's my favorite. <laughs> they are good, that's they for sure. They are fine eating, fine eating. Very unique. So this here is a mixture of soybean and cheese. Uh, the cheese that we bought was kind of loose and kind of wet. So we needed something to hold it together. We added a little bit of that meal in there. This so, is... That soybean kind of works like a cracker then. Yeah, I that think so. It kind of kind of holds it together yeah. a little bit. This stuff right here is actually designed for cows. Uh, it's a cattle supplement. You can buy it almost anywhere. And uh, a buddy of mine, the same buddy that got me to come to Bayou Black, He's using it. It's all gone every week. It's never, it's never in there, which of course, you know, kind of leads you to believe they do eat it in case there's any blue cat in the area. And what's odd is everywhere that we've been today has big blue cat. I assure you. And we've only out, caught the one. I promise you, if you only put, I mean, if you put trot lines or jug lines, you will catch only big blue cat. And the main cost in building a net is obviously the hoops. 
They're fiberglass, right? The majority of them, yes. Now, you can make them out of metal, and whenever you come run them and bend them all up trying to roll in the fish, then it looks like a stop sign. You got a little bit in it. You just got to get them down to that end. Okay. Go ahead and drop that. I'll raise up on this end. Shake them on down. And uh, even though this is an inch and a quarter net, it's always caught a bunch of little bitty fish. And I would it think, I looked at that. Some of them look like they ought to be able to go through the... Yeah, they uh, should probably be able to go through. And uh, we'll probably have to release most of them. Majority of them are blue cat, and the majority of them are going are back in the water. Yeah. <laughs> The bass I really only catch when the water gets really dirty. Like after a cold front and the water drops really, really low, I'll catch one or two Sucks every around once in, in a while. The, yeah. The uh, and I mean, they're a very intelligent game fish. They're, it's not like, uh, you know, you're not going to catch a whole bunch of them usually. Oh, I found the grass we were looking for. That's a good hydrilla in here. Yeah, I thought I lost it. I'm glad we found it. Got a few fish in it. Yeah. I'm making the water boil a little bit. I think they've gone back to being small again. There's a bunch of them in there. Or they were all about a pound. Have trouble rolling that bad boy in. I kind of look at it as when they're mixed up like that, I kind of got it in my mind that they're migrating. Right. Um, well, I, I noticed in some other area. I do notice that all the baits are going in these, isn't it? Yep, pretty much. Well, whenever you get a few fish, fish they're definitely, they're definitely going to eat it. Um, all right, we're picking out the keepers. Channel cat's got to be 11 inches. Blue cat's got to be 12. Well, they're legal. Pretty good little load in there. I mean, not what he's used to. <laughs> well, today. I'm used to uh, absolutely nothing, so uh, that's a pretty good load for the day. Mm -hmm. Heavy cover hoop net, pack and pack heavy cover hoop net. It sounds good. It does, it's got a nice ring to it. It does, sounds. Yeah. A little grass on it, so the water, water moved a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, caught a few. That's what I've been catching, like I told you. I mean, uh, it doesn't have quite as many as it's had. There's always, there's always one in there that doesn't want to come. Uh, that's where, you know, if you have your nets coated really well, they don't, they don't hang up nearly. The average net that I use is bigger than this. But coming to a new area, not knowing anything, we're definitely bringing the nets that I can I can build for $100 and not the ones I have to build for $300, you know? So I'll drop it back in, maybe she'll catch something next time. I, I haven't said this, but I got a good feeling about this one. I almost said it about the last one, I'm glad I did. Of course, it did have a lot of stuff in it. But this is going to be the one right here. I feel it. Huh? It sounds good in there. I haven't got a visual on it yet, but it sounds good. Don't sound like crabs unless it's... I thought I saw some bullhead in there. They all look pretty good to me. I do see one. Man. I do see... So you can get the nets up when they have that much in them. You just kind of... Try to get the catfish all to the back of them where the, you know, it's the where the opening is and uh, kind of work them like that. So then all you really got to do is rotate them on down in there. And a little more garbage in that than what I'd like, but we'll get it out in a second. And they were pretty much all keepers too, weren't they? Yeah, pretty yeah. much all keepers. And they have been, you know, 